There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello, BookTube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with a reaction video that <laughs> makes me sound really important. I'm not. To the fall and spring, fall 2021, spring 2022 catalog from Archipelago Books. As I'm sure most of you know, Archipelago Books is an American publisher that publishes, I think, exclusively international literature and translation. And I would say my experience with their books has been hit and miss, but I have read some really good ones. Many I will be showing during the course of this reaction video, because a second novel is coming out. But uh, I've also read some duds or bailed on a lot of stuff I've read from them, so yeah, hit and miss, but they put out good stuff, and just because I didn't like it doesn't mean it's bad. I'm always interested to see what they're, what they're coming out with next. A la Memento Mori, I'm not in love with the fact that they put out all their books in different shapes and sizes and so on. I can't, I would prefer just a regular shaped book, but it doesn't stop me from reading their stuff either. So I wouldn't be making this video if I wasn't interested in what they're doing. So without further ado, this catalog is 116 pages, but the new releases are only about 27 pages. And I'm not going to talk about every book. I'm only going to talk about the books that interest me. I'll put a link to the entire catalog. It's a PDF. Um, I'll put a link to it from the Archipelago Books website. And you can peruse it at your own leisure and do your own reaction video. They also have a 15-page recently published. I'll have a quick look at that at the end if I have time to include a few more. There is a new, newly translated, uh, a novel by Jean Giano, the uh, French writer, Enamond, so they didn't translate the title. I don't know what Enamond is. Is that the character's name? Yes, it is. Translated from the French by Bill Johnston. I haven't read the one book I have by Giano, but it was one that Edmund White wrote about in his book called The Unpunished Vice. So I would probably read it before I check this one out, but it is described as a gleeful, broad, sardonic grin of a novel coming out in September of this year. I'm interested in Sadat Hassan Manto. He is a Urdu writer, and I'm interested in him because I have a book of his short stories. This is another book of his short stories, but the one I have is called Kingdom's End, Selected Stories, translated from the Urdu by Khalid Hassan. And this one is translated by Khalid Hassan and Muhammad Umar Memon. This one comes out in mid-September. I will read the one I have before I carry on to try The Dog of Tithwal. But he is an interesting writer. He had a short career. I don't know if that's because he died young. Why, why was his career short? He was born in 1912 and died in 1955. I was particularly excited about this one. This is a new novel, new translation of a novel by Hanne Orstevik, the Norwegian writer, translated from the Norwegian by Martin Aitken. And I have read Hanne Orstevik's Love in, Ar in the Archipelago Books edition, which was also translated from the Norwegian by Martin Aitken, and I loved it. I have a full review. I think I actually got a, a galley. Is that, was that what they call them? A, 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 an arc? an ebook arc from through NetGalley and it was back in the days when I actually fulfilled my obligations there now I can't get any books from NetGalley cuz I just kind of sloughed off but I have a full review of this I'll put a link I don't know if the review's any good it was way back in my early days love was was a really fan fantastic novella so this new one the pastor coming out in early October is longer so that's good it's 280 pages love was barely 100 the protagonist is a female seminarian who leaves the seminary after, I think, the death of a dear friend to become the pastor in a small town in northern Norway. That's all I need to know. That sounds fabulous. Just because I like Orstevik, whatever I want to try, whatever Orstevik comes out with. So that one is not going to be in time for Women in Translation Month this year. And the next one, so far I've talked about the first three in the catalog, is by W.F. Hermans, and I have read his novella, William, Willem Frederick Hermans, 
also in Archipelago Books edition, An Untouchable House, which I love. It is a fabulous novella about World War II that was translated by David Colmer, and I loved it. I've acquired one other novel by him quite recently. He was a Dutch writer who died in 1995, and I know Britta Bowler is a fan of his work. So, um, the new one is A Guardian Angel Recalls, also translated by David Colmer, comes out in mid-October, set on the eve of Nazi occupation of the ne Netherlands. A public prosecutor with a Jewish lover has just fled the country. There's more about the plot here. That is all I need to know. 250 pages, so it's going to be meatier. Here is a Quebec writer that I barely even know his name, Jacques Poulin, a Quebec writer, and he has a new novel translated from the French by Sheila Fishman, Autumn Rounds. I bet you Lindy knows all about this. Lindy is so proficient, fluent in French, that she often reads Quebec literature in French. This is about a man in Quebec City who hears a brassy tune waft through his apartment window. But maybe I need a little bit more about the plot. Um, and he follows the sound and he meets a troop of acrobats, jugglers, and musicians, including one woman who looks like Catherine Hepburn. And they join him in his bookmobile up the craggy coast of the St. Lawrence River. Well, that sounds like it's either going to be really good or really bad. I'm not so sure about that one. I think I need to hear some reviews of it, but that comes out in early November. I've never heard of the, this Argentinian writer, Edgardo Kozarinsky, but he has a novel coming out, Milongas, translated from the Spanish by Valerie Miles. Coming out in early November, it's set in the gritty bars of Buenos Aires. It's lots to do about tango, something hidden in the crypt of a London church, a cafe in Krakow, and the Red Square of Moscow. That doesn't sound like a Sean book, but it might be a you book, so you can look, look more details up about that. Maja Hatterlap, who is a really interesting German writer. She is a Slovenian, German, Austrian writer, and I have, I, somebody gave me an arc of her novel Angel of Oblivion, and I, which was translated from the German by Tess Lewis, and I know that Britta Bowler is a fan of, of Maja Hatterlap, and I really enjoyed this. I am not at all happy with my review. I think I just, it was, it was a really challenging work, and I just don't, I think I needed to read it at least once more before I tried to review it, but I'll put a link to my mediocre review in the show notes. I think I'd actually w would like that to reread it, because it was absolutely fascinating. And in the meantime, she has a work of poetry coming out in translation translated from by Tess Lewis, called Distant Transit. I'm not interested, but you might be. Haldor Laxness, the Icelandic writer. Oh my god, what a tome. 550 pages. Salka Volka. <laughs> That's a catchy title. Translated from the Icelandic by Philip Routen. He died in 1998, as in his late 80s. He won the Nobel in for literature in 1955. This is about an 11-year-old with his unmarried mother in a coastal fishing village. And then his mother dies. And what happens after that? Well, that sounds like a Sean book. I've never read Laxness. Alice Munro calls Laxness a beacon in 20th century literature, a writer of splendid originality, wit, and feeling. That is coming out, if I didn't say already, uh, in uh, early March of next year. This is a novel by a gay Brazilian novelist. I've never heard of him. Caio Fernando Abreu, Moldy Strawberries. How's that for a title? This comes out in April, early April. Translated from the Portuguese by Bruna Dantas Lobato. This is going on my Pride Reading TBR, draft TBR for next year. These are short stories about Brazil in the early days of the AIDS epidemic when HIV was primarily killing gay men, unfolding within the context of a stifling military dictatorship. Yeah, sounds amazing. He died in 1996 of HIV. He wasn't very old. Maybe he was 48 if I did the math right. And I'm really excited about this one. I don't have a physical copy of the, her other book, but this is a new translation from Ida Jessen, a Norwegian writer. And I read her novel. It was actually back in the, the early days of the pandemic. Archipelago and a few other small presses 
released a lot of their literature for free in ebook format just to help people through help bookish people through a difficult time and I got a lot of free ebooks that way and one of the ones that I got that way was by Ida Jessen A Change of Time translated from the Nor- Norwegian by Martin Aitken and I have a subscriber who really likes that book I actually filmed a review of it that I wasn't happy enough with to post but I read it for Women in Translation last year and really really enjoyed it and so Ida Jessen who I felt as I was reading it because it was a novel about a, a woman back in the 1920s 30s and 40s I think in Norway I thought she wasn't maybe uh, dead or old a very old writer but no she is young her literary debut, Ida Jessens, was in 1989 with a collection of short stories. And I believe she might even live in Denmark, I think. Have I, have I got that right? Yeah, she is considered a Danish writer, but I think she was born in Norway. So, very interesting. That's what I thought. My subscriber, who's Danish, was a, is a big fan of her. You know who you are, Danish subscriber. Can you explain that? She was born in Norway, right? And she writes in Norwegian? Well, if I didn't already say... What I didn't already say is that her new novel is called A Postcard for Annie. That's coming out in May 10th next year. And it's about a young woman who witnesses a terrible accident. Oh, these are short stories. So, six stories. Fabulous. Here's a Korean novel in translation. Whale by Myung Kwon Chong. Translated from the Korean by Chi Young Kim, coming out next September. Wow, we're really getting September 2022. Wow, they are really planning ahead. Chon is a South Korean novelist and screenwriter. That is a man. And this is a set in a remote village. Follows the lives of three characters. An extremely ambitious woman who has been chasing an indescribable thriller. Ever since she first saw a whale crest in the ocean, there's the title, her mute daughter who communicates with elephants, and a one-eyed woman who controls honeybeans with a whistle. I don't think that's for me. That sounds a little too far-fetched for yours truly, but it might be for you. So those are the ones that are in the forthcoming part of the catalog. Let's have a fairly quick look at the 15 pages that are about recently published by Archipelago Books. Scholastic Mukasanga is a Rwandan writer. I have read uh, her book about the Rwandan genocide. It was also an Archipelago book. Cockroaches, yes, yes, yes. I read that in 2017 and it was uh, very terrible. It was just so incredibly uh, painful to read, but well, very well done. She has something that came out fairly recently. I don't know when they say recently released, whether it's all 2021 or when it is. But anyway, Igafu, translated from the French by Jordan Stump. Short stories. Well, I will just mention in passing, Andrea Bajani's novel, If You Kept a Record of Sins, translated from the Italian by Elizabeth Harris, because I have a copy. I haven't hauled it yet. So that one's on my pile, and it came out earlier this year. He's an Italian novelist, and part of this story is set in Romania, I remember. Here's a Norwegian novel that I remember hearing a little bit about. Everything Like Before by Kjell Askeldsen, translated from the Norwegian by Sean Kinsella. And Askeldsen is recognized as one of the preeminent Norwegian writers of the 20th century. And these are short stories. I had also pre-ordered this Croatian novel... Kin by Miljenko Djurgovic, translated from the Croatian by Russell Scott Valentino, but, and it was 928 pages. Uh, I ordered it online and they said they couldn't find a copy, so I cancelled that. I think I cancelled that. Maybe I haven't cancelled, but I haven't got it anyway, because it was supposed to come out earlier this year. Yoronosuke Akotogawa. There is a literary prize in Japan named after him. This is a collection of his short stories, Mandarins, translated from the Japanese by Charles de Wolf. I haven't read a word the man wrote. A Dutch novel, The Twin, by Gerbrand Backer, translated from the Dutch by David Colmer. I have this as a hardcover edition. It's not an archipelago book, the, the, the version I have, but that one is on my, not only on my radar, it's on my shelf. 
I think that's enough. So, Archipelago Books got some interesting stuff coming out. I will be giving a lot of these a try. Maybe you should too. Thanks for watching. Thank you.